when up and down quarks are put in SU2 doublets, the gauge bosons W plus minus act as raising or lowering operators causing transitions between up and down. Similarly, when quarks and leptons are put into an SU5 multiplet and the SU5 theory makes a gauge theory, SU5 gauge bosons arise. Some of them are the familiar ones, gamma, W plus minus, Z, and gluon, but the rest can cause transitions between quarks and leptons among the states in the 5 plet containing the lepton doublet and the d bar color triplet. If the quarks in a nucleon can turn into leptons, then the proton can decay, and baryon number is not conserved. We expect quarks to turn into leptons in a way that conserves color since SU3 is a part of the SU5 invariant theory, and electric charge will be conserved, just as it is in the standard model. To find the quantum numbers of the new bosons, we can proceed by analogy with smaller groups. For SU2, for fermions in doublets to couple to gauge bosons, we have 2 cross 2 bar equals 1 plus 3 and the W's are in the triplet. For SU3, it becomes 3 cross 3 bar equals 1 plus 8 and the gluons are in the octet. For SU5, it is 5 cross 5 bar equals 1 plus 24. We can trace the quantum numbers by remembering that 5 contains 2, 1, plus, 1, 3, where the quantities in brackets are, SU2 multiplicity, SU3 multiplicity. Then, 5 bar contains, 2 bar, 1, plus, 1, 3 bar, so 5 cross 5 bar contains, 2 cross 2 bar, 1, plus, 1, 3 cross 3 bar, plus, 2, 3 bar, plus, 2 bar, 3. Multiplying out gives, 1, 1, plus, 3, 1, plus, 1, 1, plus, 1, 8, plus, 2, 3 bar, plus, 2 bar, 3. The singlet under both is the 1 in 1 plus 24, and changes no quantum numbers. The 3, 1 and, 1, 1, are the W mu I and B mu, and the 1, 8 are the gluons. The remaining states, an SU2 doublet of color triplets and their antiparticles, are the new bosons. They are usually denoted as, yx, with electric charges qy equals minus one third, qx equals minus four thirds. The new vertices in the theory are shown in figure. As always the lines can be reversed by replacing particle and antiparticle. Any process can occur that can be drawn with the vertices of the standard model plus these. In particular, one possible transition is shown in figure. It gives rise to the decay proton goes to positron plus pi zero, which is not allowed in the standard model because the diagrams cannot be constructed, but is allowed here. Our usual technique to estimate the width is not expected to apply here, because hadronic binding effects are involved. Since we expect mx to be large, and presumably of the order of the grand unification scale, we only need a very crude answer. The matrix element must have a factor g5 squared over m unif squared, so the width has a factor g5 to the fourth over m unif to the fourth. By dimensions, the width must be proportional to a mass, and the only mass that could be relevant is the proton mass, mp. Thus, up to a numerical factor, the width gamma must be about g5 to the fourth mp to the fifth over m unif to the fourth. The numerical factor will be proportional to the probability of two quarks being in the same place so they can annihilate, which is significantly less than unity. So, the lifetime tau equals 1 over gamma will be even longer than indicated by the width shown. Numerically, since tau p varies as m unif to the fourth, it is very sensitive to the value of m unif. For m unif equals 5 times 10 to the 15th GeV, we get tau p about 10 to the 31st years. The universe has a lifetime of about 10 to the 10th years, although protons would not be stable, they would appear very stable on the scale of the lifetime of the universe. This is consistent with our perception of them as stable. To look for proton decay, it is necessary to get together a large number of protons and carefully observe them. One cubic centimeter of H2O contains about 6 times 10 to the 23rd nucleons, so a cube 10 meters on a side contains almost 10 to the 33rd protons. 
The positron produces an electromagnetic shower, which is balanced by two electromagnetic showers from the instantaneous decay of the pi zero. The detector must be sensitive to Cherenkov photons, with a high efficiency, and an ability to reconstruct energies such that it is possible to confirm that the total energy is about a proton mass. The water must be so pure to decay anywhere inside the tank is visible to phototubes anywhere around the walls. Other decays are possible as well, different guts predict different patterns of decays.